Hello, how are you doing? I'm Craig Parkinson. You are listening to the Two Shot Podcast. Sit yourself down, pop the kettle on. We're going to have a nice old chat. Who's it with this week? I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> the devil are you and I, sometimes I know, like, I know i ask that every week but you know that i genuinely mean it how are you how are things how's the week been i mean summer is definitely over i arrived in manchester today and the weather was biblical i was soaked and that's where i am now recording this yes i know i'm back in manchester for episode 99 can you believe it's episode 99 and we've got an amazing guest incredible it's the wonderful Sinead Keenan and more of that in a second let's talk about last week Mark Strong I wasn't I wasn't wrong was I the nicest fella and the response from his episode has been incredible as is do you know what what we keep getting uh, responses from Judy Hesmond Holsch and Lem Cisse from the week before and loads of other people it's someone actually tweeted me the other day about Carl Pilkington from, you know, nearly two years, over two years we've been doing this now. So people are finding us. So that's thanks to you, because what you're doing is you're spreading the word. Um, and that's what it is. It's word of mouth. And it really, really helps us. You know, it does. So thank you so, so much. Um, so what is going on? Well, if you're on social media, you will know that on Monday we made the announcement for episode 100. And it... <laughs> It couldn't have been anybody else, could it? We started episode one with Vicky McClaw. We bookend it, episode 100, with the amazing Martin Comstant. Look, look, I think these things through, you know. Don't think I throw this together. This was all planned. I couldn't think of a better guest. Um, So more of that next week. But uh, I will tell you that myself and Martin were both working, both filming on on separate things in Manchester. Uh, Luckily, we were staying in the same apartment block, so we cracked open some red wine and uh, we hit record. And I think you might like it. Uh, Well, I really hope you do. We certainly had a very good time. Um, But that's next week. On to this week. So, Sinead, it's funny because I I said to Sinead after we finished recording, why have we never met before? because we know lots of people in common, but we've never met, and she's been a big supporter of the podcast from day one. Um, and I love her work, so I was dying to get her on. And my God, we laughed. We laughed a lot. Um, if you can tally up the amount of times we say, yeah, that, that, that's, that's another podcast. We go off on so many tangents on this conversation. It's brilliant. Um, and I'm thrilled that she agreed to come on. Hey, now, listen, one more thing before we get to this. October 18th, the tickets are selling. And I haven't even announced the guest yet. Why haven't you done that, Craig? Why haven't you announced the guest? What? I haven't booked it. I haven't booked the guest yet. I don't know who it is. Um, And I'll tell you for why. Um, I've tried two people, and it's just... Their agents haven't got back to me. (laughs) That's that's the honesty. You know, know, I'm always telling you... I will tell you the truth on this podcast. But... um, (laughs) I think it's what's it in there. So I'm on a metal table. Sorry, that, that's a bit noisy. Um, I've got avenues to go down. Don't worry. It's going to be a very, very special guest in York Theatre Hall, October 18th. Come and join us. I will tell you now. Drum roll. It's not. It's not a drum. It's just me on the table. We have a support act, and a support act is the one and only J.B. Barrington will be opening for us and giving us some hilarious and heartbreaking poetry to start the evening off the right way, and then we'll get down to the podcast. But but, but that's October 18th. Get your tickets, yorktheaterhall.com. They are selling fast. Um, so, yeah, this is it. This is episode 99 of the Two Shot Podcast with the brilliant Sinead Kane, and you're going to love it. Enjoy, and I shall see you at the end. Cheers. Maybe you need a break. No, I don't. No, no. No, no I love this. Do you? Yeah. Do you ever get sick of talking to actors? 
I mean, I know yeah. it's not just actors yeah, anymore. Yeah, because that's why I speak to musicians and all that. Yeah. When I've, when <laughs> <laughs> so they started to come through. I was like, oh, when friend. I've had enough of actors, then... No, but I suppose the thing is, I don't get bored of t- talking to anybody. Because, especially with actors, because I made that rule that we don't talk about jobs. If, yeah. we, spoke, if we were If I had an actor sitting there all the time talking about the jobs all the time, yes, I probably would get bored. Yeah. And I think... Maybe the listeners might get a bit bored. Certainly the ones who have nothing to do with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then they can relate to the human aspect yeah, yeah, of it, yeah. which is what I find fascinating. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Have you, have you ever done one where it's not very interesting? Why are you asking me questions? Because I'm thinking this could be the first <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> do you know how... You know how everybody goes, well, what have I got to talk about? Yeah. Well... The thing is, what could be nerve-wracking or worrying or you overthink things like mm. that is because it's very rare in life that the spotlight, not so to speak, metaphorically yeah. speaking, is put on that one person mm-hmm. for a certain length of time. Yeah. And it's not even... You've got a list of conversations. It's like, right, OK, we're going to dig deep now and let's, we're going to talk about your life and we'll yeah. see what's going on. And then because of that, certain questions will come up yeah 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 like there was a thing that I had to do at a festival this year and I only had a certain amount of time with this legend in the music world was that Nile Rogers? it was Nile Rogers. <laughs> and I thought well I can't pass up having 20 to 30 minutes with him yeah yeah but because of the span of his life and everything that's gone on I'm going to need hours yeah. and I don't have that amount of time with I don't know, 300 people in a room. Um, So I I thought, well, what can I do? So I got other people I know who were big fans of his Mm -hmm. throughout the music and acting world and wherever they come from to ask, give me questions for him that I can ask him. And that was the only time that I was really nervous because I was taken out of my comfort zone because that's not what that's I not what do. You do I don't, yeah. Like you can see now, it's, it's just chat. well, it's just me and you in it yeah, and a couple yeah. of microphones and lovely producer Griff. Oh, he's, he's gone. gone. To he's gone. To <laughs> um, so to, to sit there and ask questions is a few minutes, and then I start to warm up. Yeah. But it's when you're taken out of your comfort zone. Yeah. You go, I don't know if I can do this. Yeah, that's exactly where I am now. Don't be like but, that, Sinead Keenan. We've no, been talking okay. about this for ages, haven't we? We have. I think I was thinking the other day, I think we've been talking about it nearly a year. I think it's over a year. Do you? Yeah. I'm going to have to check my timeline. I've got all the... the I think it was April 2018. Fuck a dog, was it? March or April. Early April See, that goes to show when people say, oh... Is it hard getting people on? Well, it's not the fact... It's not hard getting people t- to say yes, uh-huh. but it is difficult about the timing. Yeah. Because if sometimes... Summertime's really hard for musicians to get musicians on. Because of course, the, the festival The festival all, season right? is... And there's one particular musician that we've been in talks for about a year and a half and we're still talking. And, all, and she gave me a date the other week and I, said, I gave her a date yeah. and she, I said she said I can't because I'm so and so she went what about this date I went well I, I can't, can't I'm working because <laughs> I'm working so we get there in the end we'll get, we get there in the end we, we get all get there. there in the end we do but we how do. are you I'm good how are uh, you I'm really good good you look great thank you not that you didn't before in all your photos but you've definitely had a a spruced a spruced was, up I was a bit worried. A friend of mine called me just... I was outside the barber's last Friday. And said, he, said you bit, you're feeling a bit nervous. I went, yeah. Were you? Mm. Why? Well, because I'd had... The, why, is the, why are you doing this? Why are you manipulating the well, conversation? I'm just interested. About- <laughs> <laughs> no, because I'd had, as you know, I'd had that massive beard. Beard, yeah. And, and the long hair. Very long ish, hair. Yeah. For... Over a year, I think, because it went from job to job. Okay. And you know yourself, when you change anything facially... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it changes you completely. Yeah. So I was really worried that we might knock 
my confidence or my self-esteem and I might go, oh, I need the camouflage of all I need the to hair hide behind so that I hair. can hide behind all this. Um, and, uh, and plus it was a, a hairdresser I'd never met before. Ooh, that's always risky. It's my one, very selfishly, has decided to move to New York for three months. That's rude. I know. For three months? Didn't even ask me. Just well, went. they'll be back then. Oh, well, they, well, what if you really... Likes it. Loves it. Yeah, you'll never see him again. Never see him again. No. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was all right after it. Looks it, good. It's a bit like going to the dentist, like when you were a kid, just terrified of the drill. I was terrified of the choppers. Were you? Yeah. That's is proper that, fear. Is that, is that weird? It's, I suppose it's not weird because that's what you felt, but I wouldn't have thought that that would have been... Maybe you're like Samson. Was it Samson who got his hair cut and it took away all his strength? Am I making that up? Griff's nodding. Is that right? It is Samson. There you go. There you go. Not really much about religion. It's not, it's not religion. Was that religion? Or is that religion? history? Old Testament. Oh, shit. I'm not it. <laughs> Excuse my friend. <laughs> Samson Sinead, and Delilah. Is if that... we fucking encourage to swear on this podcast. Oh, good. Because so I'm t- I have a party. I mean, I hope my parents don't listen to this. But I do have a terrible mouth. When I get going, so apologies yeah, but you if anyone's going to be offended. Yourself that question: Where do you get it from? You get everything from the parents, so maybe your parents have got the potty. Do mouth. you know what they don't? I have to say they don't. I, I mean, apologize, they Mr. Can. Mrs. Keenan. I apologize right now <laughs> <laughs> for for being so presumptuous. No, no, they're 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 good, wholesome, languaged people. No. Well, soon as we're there talking about your mum and dad swearing like a navvy. <laughs> Or, or not. Yes, I, not. I think we should talk about them first. Right. Tell me what your mum and dad do or did, did yeah, for a living. Uh, my... Because where are we? Are we in Dublin? Dublin. My mum's from Belfast. Right. Whereabouts? Uh, just off the Ormer Road. Right. Um, and she grew... She moved down to Dublin in 73. Mm. When the troubles were quite bad. Be- because of that? Beca- well... Or because of work? It was pretty much because of that. My nana and papa, as much as they would have rathered she stay, mm. and my uncle as well. Um, I have another uncle, but there was a big age gap between my mom and my second uncle. Yeah. So uh, he stayed. He's still in Belfast. But it, it got... It was, it was at the height of the troubles, and they kind of gently suggested maybe you want to go south um, so she did she worked in Belfast City Hospital and then moved to Dublin and worked in the Children's Hospital right and my dad was um, she a nurse she wasn't she was admin right so I think as well with the uh, with the troubles and stuff she would be the person you know you know when you go to A&E and then you take all your details and yeah. stuff so she you know the you know kneecappings and bombings and tarred and feathered and all so she was busy she was busy um, so the children's hospital in Dublin wasn't as yeah. traumatic as that. Mm. And my dad uh, was one of one of eleven. Was he? Yeah. One of eleven. One of eleven. One of them died as a baby. Patrick died, but yeah, six boys. It was seven boys and four girls, and Patrick died when he was little. Um, so yeah, he what was a from a brood. Big that's, that's family. A, that's a lot of pregnancy for <laughs> one woman. Um, <laughs> But yeah, he got a scholarship to a good school because at that at that stage you didn't. I don't think you had to. You know, you have to stay in school to a mm. certain age now. It wasn't really the case. No, I don't think it was the case then. then. I think. Um, but he got a scholarship to because uh, they. I mean, they literally slept head to foot in 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 the house. Uh, but he got a scholarship. Well, they'd uh, have to, wouldn't they? Yeah, <laughs> <I know. laughs> God, I don't, I mean, I've got two and I just, I think I've got an army and there's yeah. two of them. Um, but yeah, he, he uh, went to Sing Street and he then, when he left there, he put himself through college at night time and he trained to be an accountant. Now, what he always says, <laughs> his running, you know, go-to joke is, if anyone asks him what you did, you know, do for a living, he'll say, I trained as accountant, but now I'm cured. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, he did those ACCA exams. Right. I think they are. And I don't know, do you, do you know anyone who's done those I exams? don't know anybody that's done them, no. <gasps> Jesus. They, they, 
it takes years yeah. to do them. Anyway, so I came along then, and you know, when he was doing exams myself, and mom be packed off back to Belfast. I'm the eldest, you know, to give him time to study and blah blah. Anyway, did all that, got the exams, and then just worked and worked and worked and worked. Some what more. year did you and your mum go back to Belfast? Well, no, it was only for like a month or like oh, two. Right, yeah, no, okay. we, we thought, didn't. No, oh, no, 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 no. It was just what exam time. Oh, just like, exam when it came time. down to the crunch, proper kind of focus, three, focus. four weeks. This is my timetable. Wife and child yeah. don't have time for you. Go. No. <laughs> uh, not in that way, but you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, so got his exams and worked really hard, and he was a businessman then. Just yeah. And then you're back in Dublin. Back in Dublin. Back is it in just Dublin. you, Shane? No, there's two more. I have a brother and a sister. Brother and a sister. Yeah. And they're both actors as well. Where did this come from, Sinead? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> My poor parents. Like, because obviously dad, mom, yeah. um, mom, to be fair, there is a bit of creativity. Like mom um, was an Irish dancing teacher on the side in Belfast. Mm. Um, and she was a re- she had been a brilliant Irish dancer in her in her youth, um, but when she moved down to Dublin, she couldn't teach Irish dancing because you needed Irish to be able to for the exam boards and blah blah blah. And obviously, she grew up. Do you in, mean she, she needed to speak? She needed to speak it. Yeah. Right. Sorry, the Irish language. Yeah. Um, and because she grew up when she did in Belfast, and, and you know, mm. I mean, they're still talking about the Irish language act up there. But we won't get into that. <laughs> um, There's another podcast for that. <laughs> I'm not getting drawn into that. <laughs> oh Jesus! Um, but yes, so she, so she, she couldn't teach. But we were sent then to to Irish dancers. So she had kind of that. And my uncle, um, Jared, is a musician. So there's that going on. And my my dad's mom and dad, my nan and papa from Dublin, they met at an amateur dramatics group. They right. were actually kicked out of it for being unruly um, so there is you know and I've got cousins who kind of do Amdram kind of stuff and I've got another cousin who's an actor in the States so things so like something it's in not the water come out somewhere. of the blue is it really not completely although you know I think when it was first mooted with the parents it, it definitely came out of the blue even though like we'd been sent to like they were called speech and drama classes yeah you know, sounds a, a lot more formal than they were um, but yeah so yeah, so that's that's the Keenans. <laughs> and how was school, Keenan? School, primary school um, was grand. I liked it. Did yeah? Were I you was, one of those? You just I was, did you I throw yourself one, into that's it. How, <laughs> that sounds quite derogatory. You one of those ones? <laughs> no, it does sound derogatory, doesn't it? No, but some people just lap it up and throw themselves open arms and just drink in school and some people are a bit I'm not really sure this institution is for me yeah. I think primary school I loved because like I mean I was I was lucky I was in um, St. Conkills in Dublin in Knockline it was a huge school there was like I think at one point it was one of the biggest schools in Europe right. it was massive um, it was a mixed school like boys and girls and mixed Um and yeah, I, I, re- I liked it. I didn't have any issues with it. Secondary school now, meh, could take it or leave it. Why but did that change? Because, just because you were growing up and you were changing. I was growing up. It got harder. <laughs> I think it, essentially. It does, doesn't it? It really yeah, does. <laughs> yeah, it did get harder. And I think, yeah, I'm probably just lazy at heart. Um, I went to a convent school. Tell me um, about a convent school. Common school. It, it, it sounds a lot more dramatic than it actually it was. It does. Yeah. Isn't it was, it? It's not. Well, it's not. It was. It was. It was all girls. It was run by the Loretta Order of Nuns. Right. Um, what's your one's name? Mother Teresa. What's the name? God forgive me. <laughs> I'm stricken down. Mother Teresa went to. Uh, <laughs> what's that. her name? <laughs> I met her. You did not. I did. I am super holy. I'm going, I've got a direct pass. You've got a first the, class ticket. The, the, How did yeah. that happen? So she came over. So she, at some point in her long life, she <laughs> um, went to, so 
I went to the day school. Then across the road, there was a boarding school. Mm. Um, and I did two classes there. I did economics and biology. In sec- I mean, that's neither here nor there. Anyway, she... She was part of the Loretto Order of Nuns. Yes. She trained there or something when she was younger. Anyway, when she was older... There's a connection, there's a connection. There, there is some sort of a tenuous link. <laughs> but when w- she, she visited, and she visited when I was doing my junior cert, which is like the GCSE over here, I think, equivalent, yeah. that kind of age. And all the junior cert years and the classes and the leaving cert, which is the equivalent of the A-level... Um, were invited to meet um, Mother Teresa um, and kind of be blessed, probably like, you know, good luck in your exams and all that did kind of thing. Did she bless you? She did. Well, she... I don't, I don't know, technically, is she allowed... Ble- I mean, I'm not really... I mean, I went to a common school, you think I'd bloody know this shit, but um, <laughs> definitely met her. We know that. Touched her. Yeah. Not inappropriately. No. It was all above board. <laughs> um, but, yeah... So yeah, I met Mother Teresa. How did we get on to her? Just the convent school. Just the convent school, yeah. So it was run by uh, the nuns. Sister Fidelis was our head teacher. Um, there weren't that many left um, when I was there. There was Sister Patricia, a couple of Sister Anne's. One of them was mental. I, I, sh- I shouldn't say that, in the dr- but she... She, yeah, she slammed a girl's uh, head with an open locker. Uh, uh, well, I was going to ask about yeah. things like that. Yeah, well, I mean, it was only the one. There's, there's, there's always one that ruins hey, it hey. for everyone else. It only takes one. There's always one. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. Um, but well, yeah. if you didn't, you'd, you'd cry. cry. Um, and she locked someone in a cupboard as well once. And this was all, it wasn't that, I mean, I'm not that old. Uh, but anyway, she she came in quite late and she didn't stay too long no either. Shit. Naturally, why did she stay? <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it was school. It was fine. You know, I wasn't hopping in, skipping every day. But I mean, who who does? But you weren't unhappy. I wasn't particularly unhappy. No. It just was what it was. Did your sister go to this? The- she did, but there's a there's a. There's a five-year age gap, and which which way? I'm the eldest, so she's five right. years younger. Okay. So she, literally, I left. I did my leaving service A level, but mm. uh, in the June, May June, and then she started in the September. So she didn't have that. Although they're all asked, you know, in the first year, did you have any sisters who went here? And I told her going in, whatever you do, my Irish teacher hated me I mean just took an instant absolute guttural dislike to me I, and I, I, I don't know because I, I was fairly and I probably am to a certain extent I was f- compliant I did what I was told I told mm. the party line I wasn't any trouble really you know give me a fucking break and she I used to dread Irish I literally would feel sick going in every day because I knew I'd be picked on I knew I'd be asked questions anyway I said to her don't fucking say that you're my sister because you can get away because we don't look anything alike right like she, I'm tiny she's tall cheekbones blah, blah, the whole thing complete you'd never pick us you know out of a lineup of sisters so you know the surname would give away they'd find out eventually just don't say anything <laughs> and she bloody goes in and she this teacher Taught Irish and English. Yeah. And Grania had her for English. Yeah, I think it was English. Anyway, she said, she went, yeah, my sister, Sinead. I was like, Grania, why the fuck did you do that? You're screwed now. She bloody loved her. No. She loved her. I, anyway. But you I'm, know when people say, no, it's not personal. This obviously was That was personal. personal. I, it, was, it was extraordinary. And because I was... We've talked my because my my eldest has just started school, primary school, and you know myself and my husband you know, three years whatever talking about school and we bullied and blah 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 and I was like no I don't think I was bullied I, if I was bullied I didn't realise I was being bullied so I and I certainly don't remember it so. no exactly but then when, thinking about it a bit I do think I was probably bullied by that teacher but it sounds like it to me yeah, yeah. anyway I didn't deserve it Craig. Do you want to name and shame this teacher? You don't have to. Tell me after. Her name... 
Go on, you want to do it? I do want to do it. <laughs> I don't think she's going to listen. Her second name began with a C. There you go. There we go. She'll know who she is. Get it out. <laughs> Come on. Anyway, yeah. All very... So leaving school... Do you have an idea? I did have an idea. I... So... I had always... I was quite lucky in that I would have been classed as, quote-unquote, academic... Now, academic, to my mind, certainly the way the school system, I don't know what it's, it's not a million miles away here. No. It's, and certainly it's become a more and more so here. It's regurgitation. It's, it's remembering stuff. Mm. It's, the, like, understanding and remember, it's not, it's not like lateral thinking or anything, you know, so I was lucky I could remember stuff. So I would have been classed as, oh, she's, she can get by, blah, whatever. And I used to love growing up, um, like legal program. Like, um, did you ever see Matlock? I remember Matlock with Andy I'm, Griffith. I know of Matlock <gasps> and his sibilant s's and his southern drawl <laughs> and his white suit. I <laughs> ate that shit up. <laughs> I loved it, and I thought that's it. That's what I want to do. Want to be a lawyer. Want to be a barrister. Blah blah blah. And that was it. That was all I was going to do. Really? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. And then, when I was f- fourteen, fifteen, um, we did a school play, and I was cast as a little Eliza Doolittle in uh, My Fair Lady. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember there was a. The, one song, one uh, the, the, just you wait, Henry Higgins or whatever that song. I don't know if people are familiar with the musical. Anyway, and it's only it was only me on the stage, and you know for for whatever reason, just the way sometimes in life you remember some things. You're like, why the fuck is that in my head? Why mm. do I remember that and not other stuff? Um, but I think that was one of the moments where I went, oh, I could quite I'd quite like to do this on a regular basis. <laughs> um, but that. Was I mean there was only ever a hobby. It was only ever. Was that the first moment that you thought, "Oh, this could be"? Yeah, this is something. Definitely. I don't know what it is, but it's something. Something. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. Um, what do you think that was? The way that you felt doing it, or the immediate sort of gratification from an audience, or maybe a mixture of the two? It was possibly a mixture of the two, but. It, Interestingly for me, you know the way, you, you know, and it's usually, it's probably usually people who aren't actors or don't know actors go, oh, you must like the applause. Mm. And it, it was never, and it's still to this day, it's, it's, it's the same. It was never the applause for me. It was the silence. It was the quiet. You know, that kind of, it's hard to explain. You, you, you no, know, I know what you mean. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's there's something changes in the atmosphere, atmosphere of the yeah. room. Yeah. Um, and the fact that, Oh, I'm in control of this, so I'm slightly orchestrating. A little bit, yeah. I feelings. never thought of it What's like that. What's going on? Yeah. Well, you're the con- you're, at those quiet moments, you become the conductor of the orchestra, and the yeah. orchestra becomes. That's a very poetic way of putting it, Craig Parkinson. <laughs> <laughs> I interviewed a poet the other week. He must have rubbed off on me. I'm really not. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was the it was the it was that quiet, and it was being listened to. I think mm. as well. Um, that's not to say that I wasn't listened to as a kid, but I was very like when we were. So my so my brother and my sister, my brother, the brilliant actor, beautiful writer as well. My sister, brilliant actor, very good writer as well. Um, <laughs> I know, I loved them dearly, honestly. <laughs> um, but um, they like Rory when he was young, like he'd be mimicking people all the time like really good mimic really funny and Gráinne was this gregarious full of life bundle of joy bundle of energy and I was kind of I the shy one the kind of you know slightly meeker oh very much so really? I was Jesus I was don't look at me I mean I come in here and I know I'm red I'm like I'm <laughs> 
<laughs> You're not red. I think I'm not really an actor. Um, but Do you think that sometimes? Do you ever get that? Oh, my God, all the time. When are those moments at peak, though? Like, like run in here, because it was a bit late, because we... The, the, anyway, but, but... Run in here going, what the fuck are you going to say? Like, it's like you were saying earlier. It's like, what's... Like, who are you? What, what do you... You know, or... You know when you get, have to go to those things and, and you, they're usually unhelpfully, although I understand why people do it, you don't get a plus one, so you have no kind of security blanket yeah, with you. And you're yeah. standing there and you're polite kind of... Well, do you know what? I think everybody feels quite exposed at those moments. You might as well just be stood there naked with an umbrella in the rain. And yeah. the I... See, I have a theory on this. I think everybody feels like that. Mm -hmm. Even though you may look to your right or to your left and you go, look at them, they're... They seem to be carrying it all on the shoulders. Yeah, with a holding court. But and, actually, yeah. I think inside they've got stomach like a washing machine and they feel exactly the yeah. same as what we do. Probably. That's I what, hope so. Oh, that's <laughs> what, well, that's what I try and think if I'm getting a bit nervous and go, we're all in the same boat. We're all feeling the or same maybe, way. Or maybe I'm just conditioning myself to thinking that and it's all complete bullshit. No, that sounds good. I'll go with that. Just go I'll with remember it, that. Go remember with that. Remember that. But I, like, even in. I'm jumping around a bit, but <clears throat> I went to uh, university then. And whereabouts in Dublin? UCD in Dublin. Oh right. yeah, I mean, like, did not, not leave home. We're not leaving Dublin yet, are we? <laughs> oh God, no. No, no, no. no. no, no. I, I. Now in hindsight, it probably would have been good for me to have my university years not at home, but I was at home. So, um, you know, people, you know, you meet people and go, you're chatting and blah blah blah, and they go, oh, did you go? Did you do loads of drum sock? Did I? Fuck! I did one play <laughs> only because. I knew the girl who was going to direct it from the kind of drama group that I went to, like, as mm. a young one. And I remember just talking about, like you were saying, do you not feel like an actor? Like, and she'd asked me to play this part, and that was grand, that was lovely, and, and, and she was auditioning um, the guys, the, 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 the male lead. So I was reading in, and, you know, I'd be chatting to... You'd get a couple of minutes with, with each guy, and blah, blah, blah. And... I remember this this one guy in particular. The 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 language he used and the spiel and the 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 his bluff. I don't know. I was like, oh my god, he must be amazing. He, oh my god, right? Okay, he's going to be brilliant. Yeah. Now he was fucking like that. Sorry, I'm a griff. I probably shouldn't bang things, but he was my god. But I just. Everyone was so, I felt, because I was very, I'm very, I'm probably just very, at my core, I'm an introvert, probably essentially is what it is, but I couldn't keep up with the, and my sister ended, with the, with the language of, of do you know, I'm, I'm not no, no, eloquent no. at all, I'm not, I, I'm not I explaining think, myself. You, you mean it like... His persona, his confidence. Yeah, and the, what's the, my, my motivation, and then what he just and what's he feeling? I'm like, I just say the lines, and mm. get just to say the lines. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I mean, that's why I never would have got into drama school. Had I like, <laughs> I wouldn't have been able for it. I would have died. I would have died a death. Died a death. Anyway. Where does this come from? What are you? Is you? Is your mum an introvert? No, no. Dad? Mm, I wouldn't say he's an introvert. Like, my mom's really good at, like, you know, sitting around the table telling a good story and a good yarn. Yeah. Um, my dad, I mean, when you get him going, he's hilarious. Yeah. But possibly quietly so. He wouldn't necessarily go into a room and you go, ah, Peter Keenan's here. Do you know that kind of way? Yeah. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say he's an introvert. Are you but, still yeah. like that, Sinead? Like, no, if you walk into a room now and you're meeting people for work, are you... Because it sounds to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. at that m moment in your life, especially that starting university moment, there was quite an apologetic air of who you were as a person. Yeah, probably, probably. 
because we know those people who I think we've all been there, I've certainly been there, where well, first and foremost we would be apologising for most things, it, it, yeah, if not, yeah. not necessarily vocally, but our sort of persona of yeah. how we would... Uh, kind of, sorry do, for being here, sorry, don't mind me, and also, I won't take um, up your time. <laughs> I'm sure I don't deserve yeah. to be here yeah. right now. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think yeah. There's there's possibly an element of that, possibly. Um, but I do I do still feel it. Yeah, a little bit. When you're going into rooms, or going to things, you're going. Why have I been invited to that? Why? Who wants me to go? Like, what's that for? Why? Do they not mean somebody else? <laughs> you know that kind of constantly second kind of guessing. Well, I think we always. Th- I know loads of people that always say that. You know, would say that when, especially with actors, when they get offered a job, and you go, "Oh, are we? Oh, you must mean somebody else." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't possibly you can possibly be me. Be me. <laughs> yeah. I remember when I got my first job <clears throat> at drama school. I was woefully underqualified for this job. Really? There's no way I could do this job at all. It was not look. What was it? I'll tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> but like, even when my when I was starting to build up my confidence at, at twenty one and kind of figure out who I was and what I wanted to do, there's one thing I always knew, and not in a self deprecating way. But I always knew my limitations, and still to this day, I still kind of hold that thought. Someone always said to me. Know your limitations. Who said that? I'll tell you off camera. I'll tell you off camera, I'll tell you off mic. <laughs> but I think it's actually good because so many people claim that they can do everything mm. and they're so good at everything. Yeah. But certainly in our line of work, you'd look at certain people and you go, well, I know that person does that thing exceptionally well, yeah. much better than I could do it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. then again, I know for a fact that my strength there, they can't really do that, but yeah. I know I can do that. Anyway, so I got offered this job at 21, and they went, yeah, you, you, you've got it. I went, no, they must, that, they must have got like photos mixed up or made the wrong phone call, because it was quite clear in the room <laughs> that I couldn't do what was asked of me. Um, but they must have seen something. Yes, I think that it was liked. called height. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were the cast fact for your that height. I was just over six foot four. Got me this job. I'm trying to think. What's was it of my cement? Was it? No, 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 no. no, 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 no I'm just thinking height now. Okay. No, <laughs> no. Anyway, moving on. Tell okay. me about. <laughs> and he takes a left turn in the conversation. <laughs> Because he's too scared that it's becoming about him. Um, university years. Yeah. Hmm? What were you saying? Mm. I mean, there was something you said before when you said, possibly I should have left Dublin to go to university somewhere else. I think just <clears throat> in terms of... I mean, I say that now, but I was very much a homebird um, what were you studying at university at that moment? I, well, at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> so, kind of going back to what we were saying, it was going to be la 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 the LA law, although that was a bit well. When I was younger, that wasn't really, wasn't really that, that was shiny it, law. That Very was shi- sexy American sexy, law, sexy, yeah. Shiny law. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, I did the play and went, oh. And at the same time as this is happening, my brother was, for want of a better phrase, because I think when you use the phrase. It, gives the wrong idea he was a child actor so he was in he'd been a, in, a, in a couple of shows in, in Dublin and then in the, in the Abbey the National Theatre there and blah 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 so that was kind of going on mm. um, and I don't know I I, I anyway the, the, I was getting the feelings that maybe this is what I would like to do now I am the eldest so my parents had never travelled down this 
road before. <laughs> I'm prefacing. I'm, yeah. um, and when I said that I would like to maybe, would it be possible? Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. No. Absolutely not. No way. What, they stole Ulster says no. Oh, really? No. no. And I, uh, I, again, my parents could not be more supportive now, but just the initial, and I think it was born out of fear. Oh, it Absolute like it, fear. Because they didn't, they didn't come from that world. They didn't come from that world. They didn't know any actors. They, they did not, and all they see is bloody actors. I mean, they don't, they, they, how are you going to survive? You're not, you're going to be not working yeah. more than you're working. And, but you, but you were going to go and you were going to, you were going to do, you were going to, what? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. You're living in a dream world. No. This is not a viable career. This is not, uh, yeah. If you want a, a, a life of being broke and failure yeah. and rejection. Yeah, yeah. this I'm is not, not having not that for my firstborn. Happening. Yeah. No way. Which, and also a different generation. Different generation, absolutely. And they, like, my dad came, like, worked his arse off, and my mom with him, you know. And it, yeah, you go, oh, hang on, I've, wh- what? What are you doing? So, I think you're right, though. It does, it, that's born out of fear as well as being a different generation. Yeah, absolute fear. Um, so because all what? you want for your kids is, is the absolute best for them to be safe, for them to be happy. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so that was a no. So then I was like, fuck. So then it, it, it came closer to, I think it's the UCAS system here. Isn't yes. it? Yeah. So in Ireland, it's CAOCAS. It was back then. Um, and I was like, I am, I knew there was something deep, deep, deep down inside where I knew if I go down the law route, I, I know I'm, I'm not going to use it. I know I'm not going to use it. So I said, right, well, I'll, I would go to university because at that time as well, which is weird, when I was about to go, the UK, which had free tuition, mm. then took a step backwards and started charging. Whereas we, at the same time, switched were going the other way. Switch the other way. Yeah. Which is, anyway, that's another different podcast. As he said, don't talk about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> We can talk about anything. If we want to do that type of podcast, we can do it, you know. There's nothing stopping us. Politics. <laughs> um, no, so so I was like, right, well, I'll go, but I'll do an arts degree, which will essentially, as far as I was concerned, was going to bide my time. Right. So I studied history and sociology, and I did French in first year. Hated it. Um, oh, I never went. I never went. I yeah. never went. Oh my god! Typical me fashion. Don't like it. Ooh, head in the sand. <laughs> just ignore it. Then it's not there. I don't know how I passed it. I, I well, you passed it. I passed it. I have no idea. They must have seen my name and gone. She is not going to pick this. It's fine. Let her go. Just let her go. No, I'm, this is your memory again. You just sort of you just drank it all in. And then spat oh, well, it all I don't, out. You didn't well, even know what I don't, doing. but I couldn't have drunk it in because I wasn't there. It's the point. <laughs> How the fuck did I you have pass? no idea. I have no idea. I mean, I, I must have just scraped. scraped it. But what I did, I failed history, which I had been good at. So basically, I had come from this cosseted secondary school. You know, you do if you're late, you get a, a docket. If you get three do- dockets, you get detention. If you get three detention, I mean, you're very strict. Yeah. And. Like I only ever got one bloody docket in my whole lifetime there, and it was it wasn't even my fault. <laughs> anyway, you say, you say that's that. another. I say that, Craig. Yeah, um, <laughs> just admit but, it. So where you're kind of shepherded, and you're told what to do and when to have things. That when university, it was like, yeah, come to the lectures, don't come to the lectures, whatever, come to your tutorials, don't. Come. And I had a lovely L time in the student bar <laughs> for the first year, <laughs> and as a result, failed history and had to repeat the year um so but by doing that that means you've added a year I've extended on. my time <laughs> right yes. so instead of three you're I'm now doing four. four yeah yeah, right. yeah yeah um so how did we get on to this so i repeated history um did that and then went and had we had you don't have j1 visas here do you no explain to me the j1 oh, visa they are a gift so Anyone in third level in Ireland, well, actually, maybe not even third level, it's just up to the age of 25, can get a J1 visa for the States. Well, this could all be about to change because <laughs> of our current. Uh, it all could be man. about to change. Fucking hell. 
Anyway, another podcast. Another Craig. podcast. <laughs> um, so, a J1 visa is basically you get a visa, you can work in the States for, is it four months? Or is it 90 days? So, what's that, about three months, and then you yeah. can have a, a, a month's holiday visa on top of it. So, basically, you go to the States for a brilliant summer. So, I went to Ocean City in Maryland and had a great time. Brilliant time. Were you working or just. I was waitressing. Uh, I was waitressing and then I worked in the kitchen of the restaurant. Uh, but having a. But mainly having a really good time. <laughs> Oh, it was amazing. Harrison's Harbour Watch was the name of the restaurant. It was <laughs> fantastic. And the guy who ran it, who owned it, his name was O'Donnell, something O'Donnell. So he had Irish heritage, like, I mean, generations and generations, but yeah. he was Irish. And every summer he kept open like 15 job vacancies because that's when it, Ocean City really got busy and yada, yada, yada. So he'd always had loads of Irish in. Um, anyway. That was brilliant. How did we get onto that, Craig? Um, because Where we were talking about the extension of university and so failing university. with history, repeating the year. Repeating and then the year. we were talking about the J1 The J1 visa, visa, yeah. Why did we get here? Anyway, that was a great summer. Had a laugh. <laughs> um, came back. Did my finals. Anyway, yes. So then we're back with the Young People's Theatre group that I was uh, a member of. And my brother and my sister were, um, you know, all, all the while parents, no acting, no acting, no acting, no acting, no acting. Um, and uh, so we're back in my final year. Yeah. Just about to start my final year. And I got an agent. So <laughs> Okay. Yeah. How this is all pass over face. So the drama group that I was a part of Hmm. I don't know if you remember in like the maybe late eighties, early nineties would have been when the Irish film like there was like My Left Foot and Into the West and all that. So there was a bit of a buzz about the Irish film industry. Obviously a lot of that happened in Dublin. Dublin's a very small place. So whenever anyone needed kids there was, there was kind of, there was three kind of op- main options they would go to. So the Billy Barry, which was like a stage school, kind of jazz hands, singing and dancing. There was, and then the other, t- there was Betty Ann Norton, and then the Young People's Theatre Group, and I was part of the Young People's Theatre Group. So cast and directors would go to them and you'd audition right. and blah, blah, blah. And I uh, had auditioned, so this was coming into my final year in university, so I was like 18, 19, 19, 20. I don't know. Anyway. And I had auditioned through, you know, cast and directors coming to the drama group for a film that would be uh, called Sunburn. Right. With Killian Murphy before he was Killian, Killian Murphy. Murphy. Um, and that was to be filmed in the States. Right. So I auditioned, you know, on tape, blah, blah, blah. Heard nothing. But the casting director sent that tape screen. Probably would have been an actual tape. Would have been an actual tape, tape yeah. Um, For all the young people listening, <laughs> tape is a videotape. Look it up yes. and Google it. And marvel. <laughs> um, so she sent that in? She sent that to an agent in Dublin. Right. And said whatever she said. Um, and they, they offered me representation. Oh, this is a bit sticky because uh, all the while, you've all got the while, the no acting, no, no acting, no acting, no acting. Um, so I was like, Japan, hold fire. Um, in the meantime, I'm then doing uh, coming to the final year, doing Eliza Doolittle again. Would you believe? She's but not come in back school. To She's come us. back. I. A reprise of the role, <laughs> uh, but it was one of those ones where, like, uh, I was Eliza and my younger brother was playing my dad. One of those kind of, you know, as you do, one, one, of those normal, group, one of those normal, normal productions. Yeah. Um, and could have been worse. <laughs> it could have been a lot worse. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Anyway, so after that, you go to the pub. Naturally, I mean, is it any wonder? With the actors. Anyway, uh, so we're sitting in the pub. Mum and Dad were there. And I'll never forget, Mum, D- Dad said, Sinead, come here, sit down. 
And I thought, because I think we were all going out to, to a party to someone's house afterwards. Yeah. You know, it must have been the last night of it. And I thought it was going to be, look after Rory. Look after Rory. Now, Grania would have been too young, so it would have been, look after Rory. Blah, blah, Anyway, sat down. And he said, now, myself and your mum have been talking. I'm like, yeah. And we think that maybe you should, once you've done your degree, once you've done your finals, maybe you should give acting a go. No. And literally, I started crying. And I was like, oh, but you only have a year. You've only got a year. <laughs> Cheers, Dad. I mean, with one hand, with one hand to give us. My God. Now, you know, like, a year in acting is sweet. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, grand. Okay. I thought, brilliant. I thought, well, because at that point I was waitressing in Planet Hollywood in Dublin. Right. And I thought, well, that'll be a year in there, but sure, fuck it, it'll be grand. At least I'll have tried. Because my one fear all along was like, I don't want to wake up when I'm 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 and go, what if? Like, what if? Isn't that so many people's regrets? I well, yeah. worry about not just, about also about who they are. Yeah. I don't want to get to that stage. Yeah, because it's so true. It's the things you don't, I th- well, I think, Unless you're bloody raping and pillaging and murdering people, you don't tend to regret the things you do. It's the things you don't do. It's so true. That's so true, yeah. And that was always my, oh my God, it's giving me anxiety just thinking about it. So anyway, so that, well, at least I've tried. I have a year. Fuck it. I'll, have, I'll do whatever I have to do. And also, at this stage, it's better than nothing because at the moment, for so many years, it's been no, yeah, yeah, shut yeah, down, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. So then I did my finals at said yes to that agent lovely agent and did my finals in the May and like just after I finished I did I did a like a, a like a screen test for some sitcom at RT which is like BBC over there blah yeah. and um, didn't get it whatever fine and then one morning in August I'd been out on the lash as they say <laughs> sorry mum and dad <laughs> uh, the night before and my friend Sharon Hayden who was working with me in Planet Hollywood had stayed over <laughs> I got a phone call and mom said, so and so, come down. It was my agent saying, um, Fair City have rung like, the Irish soap. And they want to know if you would like to play the part of Farrah Phelan. I was like, oh, what? you know, you mean to audition for it? And they said, no, it's, a, it's an offer. I was like, what? Hello. And they said, yeah, somebody, it was, it was a body swap, basically. The, the actor, Fiona Glascott, who I now know, is a friend of mine, uh, had left. Yeah. Uh, there must have been like a time issue and they needed someone quickly. And obviously they'd seen the, whatever, the audition I did for that thing that never happened a couple of months ago and just said, yeah, do you want to do it? Like, yes. And of course then... Once my parents were like, oh, she's on telly. What's oh, grand? And also so she's on Fair City. She's on Fair City. Yeah, she's made. It's like, it's like, a, northerner, the big it's like a northerner being on Coronation yeah. Street. That's it. <laughs> That's it. And that, so yeah, so that was... And how old were you now? 20, 21, 21, 21 to 2? 21, 21, 22. Yeah, because I was young going into uni. I was 17. Right. So 21. So 21. Yeah. yeah. God. Yeah. Fast forward to what did my brother study in Trinity? Drama and theatre studies. What did my sister study? But well, she did do international relations in St. Andrews, but then she went to RADA. Now, I don't want to say there's parallels with um, the French teacher that hated you and your own parents. You know, Irish teacher, I have to clarify. Oh, it's sorry, the Irish, Irish teacher. teacher. It's the Irish teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Keenan, if you listen to this, you know I'm only joking. <laughs> no, it's grand. I was the guinea pig. That's what happens. Yeah. That's what happens. Yeah. Well, Sinead's so. doing all right, so the other two can do it. Yeah, go on. In you go. So how long were you doing Fair City for? I did for a year. And I, it was, it was great. It was training. It was on the hoof training. Well, I was it was say, an apprenticeship. You, you it hadn't was, done any television? I hadn't done anything. No. And, uh, actually, I ended up playing Killian Murphy's girlfriend in that film. In that film. So you did get. I did get, yeah, but that was, I thought, well, 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 well. Um, but yeah, so that was my pro- that that was it. That was on the hoof um, training. It was brilliant. I loved it, um, and I'd started in the September, and I auditioned for something else. I met the Hubbards. Am I allowed to say that? You yeah. can say anybody. Met Ros, lovely Ros. Lovely Ros. And she's like, "What are you doing now?" I said, "Oh, I'm, I'm in Fair City, and I should get out." I was like, "What? <laughs> you need, you can't you can't stay. 
you've got to get in and get out. And I said, well, like I was in a month. <laughs> um, Is that what she said to you a, yeah. a month in? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, I was like, okay. But thinking, no, oh, it's going to be grand and fine. So I had a great time. And uh, coming up to the, 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 there was a yearly contract then. Um, and my agent was then beginning to write, come on, you don't want to get too comfortable. And But as you quite rightly pointed out, this was an amazing apprenticeship for you. It was it, amazing. Because you're learning on the job. It couldn't have... And you're getting paid And you're getting paid. Learn. Exactly. And I was still living at home. Yeah. Oh, God. Like, well, I was on the pig's back. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, I mean, I understand where they're both coming from. But... Yeah. You were 21. Yeah. And we all... You know, that's the great thing about what we do. We're constantly learning from everything. Yeah, job. yeah, yeah. But... Yeah. You're so, for want of a better word, green. Yeah. At 21, it's like you're drinking Absolutely. it all in. Absolutely. You couldn't, have, you couldn't have been in a better place, really, no, could you? Definitely not. No, it was it was fantastic. So then I was getting pressure, leave, leave, leave. And it was so it was something my dad said. You know, I, was, I don't know what to do. And then he said, Well, look. And I thought this was so impressive coming from him because they were so reticent. I was like, I don't know what to do, and blah, blah, He said, look, always take the risk in life. And that was a lot coming from him, you know. And I was like, okay, okay. Especially from somebody who had blocked... I was given up the most, the most, you know, permanent job you will have in acting. And, and security. And security, yeah, yeah. Everything that the, the parents were worried about yeah. an industry you're going into, you've got. He, yeah. And then he's literally going yeah. off road by going. Yeah. You should take risks. Yeah. No, they were they were brilliant. I mean, and that, that's why I preface when I was saying, you know, they could not be more supportive. Like when when he realised that we were all probably heading in the one direction. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, like my dad is a ferocious reader. Like there's books. There's our house is covered in but I mean and I love books as well like being around like just even seeing them mm. but his like it's history and politics and he I don't know how he does this I don't know how anyone does it but like they'll have six or seven on the go I mean I, I, I don't have the brain capacity for that like you dip in and out of you know different ones but no. if you know you'd be in down, mom and dad's room doing you know whatever and you'd see the plays would start to appear and really? Arthur Miller yeah yeah and took That's like took a real interest um and you know they you know they've with all three of us they've been to every bloody opening any bloody cast and crew they can go you know they will you know they could not be more supportive um but also if their three children are getting into this and your dad is such a ferocious reader and wants to drink in the knowledge mm. if he's going well this is an area that I know nothing about, therefore I need to know the knowledge of what these yeah, two are getting into. Yeah, so yeah, it yeah. makes a load of sense, really, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then what? You came out of Fair City. Yeah, I did that, and then... Were you nervous about coming out, having been there for so long? I was, I was a bit. Uh, I was a bit, but again, you're young. You got, you know, something will turn up. Of course. Um, and a couple of things did. And then I found it quite tricky to get into theatre there I found it a bit of it my experience was it was a bit of a closed shop because it's such a small community in Dublin yeah and yeah. it really is isn't it it's, what, it's tiny three three main theatres so there's the Abbey the Gate the no there's bound to be more it's bound to be more and there'll be Irish people listening on she doesn't know a thing I, don't, I mean I'm so long out of Dublin but I've been to Dublin a handful of times um, but they're the, the two the two would, big the, the kind two of, that were spring to mind yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so there was kind of nothing happened on that end of things and then a lot of my friends from Young People's Theatre Group who became actors then moved to London and you know like well maybe and again big homeward and then I had so things kind of slowed down here in Dublin acting wise and then I had a break up and so there was a, a bit of a push factor. And it was actually, again, it was my parents who said, look, would you think about going to London? 
Wow. Isn't like isn't that incredible? Like yeah. now that I'm saying it, going fucking hell, they were doing all these things they probably didn't want to do or suggest or anyway. So I did, and I don't think they thought <laughs> when they suggested that that I would still be here <laughs> um, in the UK. Um, but yeah, so went over and um, waitressed my ass off. And do you know people over here? I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, the, 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 do you know Andrew Scott? I know Andrew Scott. He, we were in the same. He was in the Young People's Theatre. Oh, was he? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I've known him since I was about fourteen. So we. So were you moving we over here with, with a bunch of those from the Young People's Theatre? Yes, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Safety in numbers. Safety in numbers, mm. and uh, yeah, moved here. Really struggled, and that was despite having a community already. Do you know what I mean? Um, I. The homesickness was horrific. But I was going to say, for such a home bird. Oh, horrific. Like, so much so that I was... Because I think flights are slowly creeping up again, but I'd block book kind of every second weekend ahead, yeah. knowing that I'd be, you know... And I'd, you know, the waitress thing, I'd go, well, I can work Monday to Friday, and then I... And it got to the point where I wouldn't tell my parents I was coming home because they were like, Sinead, if you're going to give it a go, you've got to give it a go. You've got to stay there. <laughs> Your parents are amazing. They've gone right full <laughs> circle. <laughs> Changing the locks. Um, we're doing this for your own um, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, so... Did, kept things, that. did things start to settle down for you? Inside internally in London, did you start to it find took your feet? About three or four years. Did it? Oh yeah. It. I mean, it was a. You got to sit in that hot bath until you're comfortable. You know, like it's yeah. real kind of Jesus. I'm not enjoying this. Fuck, that's a long. It's time. It's a long time. Yeah. Especially because what we now twenty two. Three. Right. Oh, no, hang on. No, no, no. Sorry, I didn't move over. So there was a bit of a time. So, so. So left Fair City like 22. Yeah. So that I was knocking around Dublin then till I was 24. All right. Yeah. So 23, 24, I moved over. No, 24, I moved over. 24, I moved over. Okay. You'd think I'd know my own timeline. Um, <laughs> it's because we're jumping about. We're it's jumping very around all worry, over the shop worry. and it's all very dull. Um, <laughs> it's not so, dull. Stop it. Oh, uh, no. no. What was I saying? What took three or four years to settle down and yeah. find your feet? Yes, it did. And then I... What was going on with the work at this point? The work was kind of bits and bobs. Did a bit in the Royal Court. Um, I, I, you know, bits and bobs. Like ticking, ticking over, but not in... There was a lot of swathes of time, as you know, just as it is. And London is... T it's two different cities. If you have a bit of money... It's a great out place. Yeah. And if you have friends nearby, it's great. And if you can see them regular, it's great. If you're struggling, if you're not happy in your job, you know, your, your in betweeny job, as I call it, which is where I think we earn our money as actors. Like when we're actually acting, we do kind of that for nothing because it's the it in between where you really earn, you might, well, if you know what I mean. Well, it's true, yeah. Um, and it's it, it's it can be a very lonely, lonely place. And unforgiving. Unforgiving. An unforgiving city. Yeah, yeah, completely. And in, in, in the seasons as well, it's different. In the summer, fabulous. Yeah. <gasps> the South Bank, great. Because also sometimes if you skin in London at summer, you've got all these fabulous open spaces. Exactly. You've got the if you've got a few books on the go, I'm just going to sit in the park. Yeah, amazing, brilliant. But not so much when you're freezing your ass off. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so that took a while to settle So what down. was the change? What Was there a certain changing point? I got a job outside London. <laughs> I got a job. I did a season at the RSC. Right. And like ages ago, 14 years ago now. And um, met my now husband... Uh, on that job, and we had a great summer. I had a great, great old time there. Um, I mean, London to Stratford is wildly different oh, yeah, places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the different. pace is completely different. Yeah, the yeah, people yeah. are completely yeah, different. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we we were lucky because, you know, when you, you've got actor friends, and you say you're going down there, and go, Jesus Christ, you're going to be born. <laughs> 
Um, but you weren't. I was, no, because we had a really good company. Yeah. I was doing nice parts. I was having a great old time um, in the Dirty Duck every night. My liver. <laughs> whole, honest to God. I counted it at one point after we'd left Stratford and there were five nights I could literally count on one hand when I didn't drink. Throughout that whole period? Yeah. Those days are gone now, Sinead, now you're a mother. Oh, oh my God, are they gone. Oh my You don't get time God. for that. And, uh, listen, if I go to the toilet on my own, I am winning. <laughs> it's it's literally... Uh, oh, it's Jesus. So yeah. Can you please just... Give me a piece for two minutes. I mean, I just want to urinate. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I won't be long. Is it that much to ask? <laughs> <laughs> I don't do it when you're doing it. Yeah, yeah but you can. But the, the point is, I don't want to. <laughs> oh, Christ. Yeah, those days are... Just jumping back. <laughs> yeah. Because we've established now that we like to jump around the time frame. Yeah. We're used to it. Yeah. Do you know, in London, during... Mm that first three to four years yeah. was it when were the moments where you just or were there any moments mm -hmm. where you just went I, I, no I can't I, I can't do this it's all getting just a bit too much I there, there were and I can tell you exactly when it was it was end of November beginning of December 2004 and to be specific <laughs> Which is what we like. Yeah. I was living in Deptford Bridge. Right. Where's that? South. I'm terrible. It is. So it's, it's, it's in between Deptford and Greenwich. Lewisham. You know, Greenwich, me. Lewisham yeah, yeah, yeah. The okay, DLR kind of. I think I know, yeah, I think I know what you mean. Yeah, 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 of course. <clears throat> I was living there and I was really beginning to question my life choices. <laughs> Um, Were you seriously? I really seriously. Like, I was looking up unis and things and post-grad courses and yeah. going back to do law. Um, oh, God, or law's, something law's else. rearing its ugly really? head again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but also, I, like, having conversations with my dad again... Because you know, in those in those in those darker moments or those quieter moments, you go, "What the fuck am I doing?" I mean, it's not like I'm saving anyone's life. I'm not helping anyone. I'm not doing anything. Even when I am doing the acting, I'm not. It's nothing. It's not brain surgery. It's not, you know, nursing or fucking policing or you know. It's where's 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 the help what, 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 where's the greater good in it it's so nothing I am just you know satisfying my own narcissism whatever and it was my dad again who said I remember one conversation he said look when you when people come home from work after a hard day's work whatever most people nine to five other people shift work, whatever. What is one of the first things that most people do? I was like, I just put the kettle on. I don't know. He said, they turn on the telly. Because they just want half an hour, an hour, whatever, just a bit of downtime. They want to laugh. They want to escape. They want to escape. Or they want to go, and I kind of, I was like... <clears throat> Yeah, it's still not, you know, brain <laughs> surgery. But, okay, I see what you're saying. So there is some, some sort of value. Um, but I, I'd, I'd still, I'd gone, nah, I'm, I'm done with this city. I am done. And I'd, I'd had a very unfortunate incident. I'd too unfortunate. I'd come, so I was living in Deptford Bridge, which is, as we established, south, wherever, east, west, I don't know. But it's, south. Lewis, anyway, it's a long way out when you're working in a restaurant in... Kensington Knightsbridge. Oh fuck! Yeah, it was Marco Pierre White, um, Frankie Dettori, and uh, Marco Pierre White's restaurant. Um, used to work there, Marco, every night. And there, yeah, there's another w was, story. Was Marco in the kitchen? No, no, no. He oh, no, he was long out of the kitchen. Oh no, he, God, I was he, So say. he he would sit in like be like a room like this before you kind of go into the dining room, and he'd yeah. sit and hold court and blah blah. He's Great character. character oh, he's a character. <laughs> he's definitely a character. Uh, but anyway. Um, so that was a schlep. That's another podcast. That's another podcast. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so that was, so finishing there at like one, two in the morning, 
And then traipsing and all then the way back. Traipsing all the way back. But anyway, so I had an incident. Something had happened. The DLR wasn't working. I had to kind of derail my route or whatever. And then I was on a bus at like half two, three o'clock in the morning, night bus, stone cold sober, coming from work. And I, I can't even remember what happened, but all bloody hell broke loose. And it was like people like there was a fight happening on the bus but it was like it was a rammed bus so it was, it was, it was, it was, everything was in your face it was horrific and you know when you're low anyway you're like well that's it yeah. that's my sign and then more so well I, do, I mean I don't know if this attitude, anyway we, the apartment we were in was, was on the ground floor and there had been work happening in another apartment block across the way and I it was getting ready to go out for power walk my mode of exercise don't like going to the gym hate them my knees can't handle the running so I power walk I'm one of those funny little waddlers um, but I was I was getting ready to go out and I heard I was on the builders and I came out of the the door and a guy had jumped off jumped off no yeah and you know when you, I remember it was, the four, it was Thursday the 4th of December and you know when you're like you're, you just you kind of you you're can't, you can't you're not quite computing what you're seeing. Yeah. And then all these builders were coming over from from the other the other site where they were, and it, I was like, "Is he all right?" And they were like, "They were then on it. They were like a, a paramedic team, <laughs> but they were builders." Yeah. Um, and and then I just I, I just I just I just walked away I was like well they've they've got it and I don't know what to think and, and went away and I rang my dad and talked to him and then I came back like I'd obviously le- went on a very long walk <laughs> we came back and there was it was like it had never happened all trace of him was like there was blood, 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 all trace yeah. gone and then you go, fuck, people have left here this morning and come back this morning and will know. never know that this no. happened. And then moments like that, you go, what the fuck are you doing with your life? You know. Um, and then two weeks later, I got a series of meetings for for the RSC. Um, and then I was offered that and, and, and then went down to Stratford. And that's when things... Obviously, we're going to Stratford turned. sort of ch- changed. We turned a corner at Stratford. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, you know, great bunch of people, and it was outside of London, and then went back to London, and then struggled again. Just that swathes of time where you're not, where you're not working, and you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, and you're kind of, you know. What's that phrase? You're barring off Peter to pay Paul, or you know? Yeah, you're I'm just, not, sorry. I know the fra- I know what you mean with that phrase. Yeah. Um, Do you worry? Mm. Are you a worrier, Sinead? At the times yeah, when? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd say I do. I'd say most people. Well, I mean, maybe they don't. But yeah, I can't. Yeah, well, it can goes be. Back to what we were saying at the beginning about the, the confidence at certain do's and you go oh no we're all the same so yeah. maybe, maybe everyone's a worrier but yeah. maybe people want to hide that but yeah. I think there's a lovely quality with sticking your hand up and going no I'm fucking I'm worried about this mm, yeah. yeah I don't think it's anything to <gasps> be ashamed of I think there's something I'm a worry mm, I worry I, yeah. I mean I, I think I worry less now about yes. certain things yeah. it's about putting your energy into things that you should worry about. Yeah. And the other, the frivolous stuff that I probably used to worry about. Yeah, it's all smoke and mirrors. They're it's less all, important, yeah. aren't they? I think probably kids helps with that. You, you kind of go, I don't have the headspace that I used to have. I was no room. To be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. no room. <laughs> you know. Has things changed for you as an actor becoming a mum? And I Do don't you know even mean pro- your priority because mm. your, pro- your first priority is obviously being a mum, but I'm yeah. more talking about your career. It's interesting you say that because... and Because I, I was asked that question a lot a couple of years ago. Oh, after don't a ch- then. I don't want to <laughs> no, 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 sorry, no. <laughs> no I don't but mean but like just that. in terms of, you know, uh, do you think you could have played this... Do you think being a mum means that you play this 
that you were more suited to this role or a particular thing? Oh, I don't, I, yeah, I think that's a silly. I don't mean that. Yeah. I don't mean that. Oh, right, okay. I mean it more um, not to do with specific roles, to do with you your career about what you would take what you wouldn't yes. take things like that absolutely because so it, it has to I think I've always been I've tried to because you know I hear you say it a lot and it's so true the, we have very little agency in what we do it, we've practically none the only thing we can do is say yes or no yeah and that's what we're in control of but it's a great strength it, yeah yeah which shouldn't be dismissed yeah no definitely not and, and, and that, that, that's something I think that I had to learn to go, no, you don't have to go and meet that. You don't have to do it. You know, is it what you want to do? If you got offered it, would you do it? No, right. then don't go. <laughs> don't, don't go. Which is, ex- which is brilliant. Because I say to some younger actors, and I'm mentor for a, a young lad from Central at the moment, and I say, always question, always question, if you're not going to do it, don't, don't go, go for it. Because, because you know it- what? They'll be more pissed off if you're really good exactly. and you go in the room and then you go out and say, I don't even want to do it anyway. Well, then why yeah, come yeah, in the yeah, first yeah. place? Yeah, 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 So you're wasting your time and their time. So just go, no, nah, it's not for time me. Time is so precious. Yeah, it is. Don't waste. Absolutely. Look after yourself. It's yeah, self-preservation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. It comes under that umbrella. Yeah, because then all you do, if you then felt you're forced to do it, or you're doing a job that you don't want to do and then you feel shit about yourself and then that eats in and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, th- th- being a parent, things, because mo- I mean, I haven't stood on a stage and. Jesus. 12 years? Well, I was going to say, you 12 can't, years. we can't go swanning no. off for six <laughs> months somewhere. A nice tour. It ain't happening. No, no. So, so it would be screen, and unfortunately, not, not a whole lot would film in and around Stratford upon Avon. Um, so it'd be going away. So it has to be worthwhile. It has to be. Not necessarily financially, but 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 you know, is it something that I'm going to enjoy? That it's going to benefit me? You know, it, it has to make sense. Because if you are going, I was talking to somebody not so long ago. Actually, I was saying we were talking about privilege and sort of catching yourself on and going, oh, it's a very privileged position here mm. because we're not doing that nine to five yeah. thing. That structure, there's no structure, mm. and when you're a parent. We all know that children thrive and need structure. Yeah, routine, And yeah. some of us have learned the hard way <laughs> that sometimes if you throw the structure out the window, oh, it all falls good back on you because you start again. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's really difficult and it's, it's not great for them. Yeah. So if you're going away, if we're going away for, let's, let's say, six weeks mm-hmm. and we're not at home and it's quite impossible that maybe we'll get back for a day. Yeah. Maybe, Maybe. If the schedule is going according to plan. Which, you know, as we all know... <laughs> doesn't. Doesn't. <laughs> but that's part and parcel. But the privilege is that we're away for that six weeks and it's intense. Yeah. But hey-ho, the next eight weeks or however long... You're there. We're there You're all the there. time. Exactly. My, so, Chris, th- th- my husband, he, I mean, he was an actor when I met him. He's now not... Um, He's a director. He's director. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know. How do you I, know that? I know. You've done some homework, I know, Craig. I know many things, Keenan. I know uh, many things. But Not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> some. Um, but yeah, the, the one thing that used to be the killer before having kids about this job was the not working. It was this way. But it, ha- it has turned out to be the biggest benefit now. Yeah. I mean, as long as we can keep our bills being paid and all that is to have that time like he we've both been able to drop him off the eldest sorry at school every morning and pick up every afternoon for his first couple of weeks which is pretty he's one of the few I mean the way it lands women tend to be the ones do, he's one of the I mean you probably well I don't know do you find at the school gates that you you're probably outnumbered by the, yeah, the oh yeah I'm there's I'm probably one of two dads yeah. a lot of the time at the school games. But isn't that brilliant, though? Oh, yeah, I don't speak to him. Well, yeah, this, that's a whole... That's another I podcast, <laughs> Craig. I, that, the again, school gates. The theme of today's podcast is another podcast. We've got oh, so many other... We'll God. just do another podcast. Just do another one. Just do something about school the gates politics the politics of the school gates. Oh, my God. I can't get involved just because 
we all had sex around the same time. <laughs> we, it does, I don't mean to be rude, but we've got nothing in common. That's about it. And I can't, I can't really talk about <laughs> little Jimmy's football practice because I don't care about <laughs> That sounds terrible, oh, doesn't God. it? No, no. But, but truly, I, I really don't. Yeah, it's a minefield. It is really hard. It's, and I'm you know a week what? and a half in. <laughs> Get sucked in. Oh, I know. Because you've got no choice. No, exactly. And otherwise you become that parent. Oh, yeah. Did you they see? Don't, uh, mm. yeah, they don't get they don't involved, get involved in, the, in no, the, no, no, the PTA no. meetings. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't want to listen to your eight-year-old try and play the trumpet badly my ears are bleeding oh god oh god you've got all this to come all of it i'm sure it'll be great it really <laughs> won't no it will it be fantastic and you can do another podcast all about this. all about that this the school experience as a parent but that thing about the downtime i remember when um i was talking to somebody about living in london and the downtime was a real killer and talk about worry as well because it was always there it was omnipresent work was always there whenever you looked because you're yeah. in London yeah here's and a show you didn't get the phone you f- oh why is the phone not ringing why is the no scripts landing mm. in my letterbox back in the day when they used to send scripts yeah. <laughs> for young people they used to send scripts by something called Royal Mail they used to sometimes land. they would courier them <laughs> Oh, there was, and that made you feel really important. Really special. <laughs> but, you know, it's there all the time. But yeah. then, since moving out of London and having children, mm. well, yes, your priorities change because I need to put all my energy into that. Yeah. Or, do you know what? I'm in the countryside, I'm going to go for a walk. Yeah. And I'm not going to think about it. And it's really, really healthy. Really healthy. Really good for you. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. if you're constantly thinking about one thing that you're not fulfilling it's going to break you down yeah, it's going to eat you up and that's only going to harm you essentially at the end yeah so having children has really helped you is the cure <laughs> <laughs> maybe I should have some more no no I think we're okay we're capping it at two there you go, well, yeah, we this. never say never Craig um, <laughs> but I think we're okay <laughs> Yes, four and a year and ten months. It's, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're in the trenches. Busy. We're in the trenches, yeah. yeah. So now, would you say you're at a stage in your career, I don't want to say, it's not like I was jumping on the carrot then. <laughs> I wasn't. Um, that you prioritise a bit more, that you relax a bit more about as if where the next job's coming from or does that never uh, in a way I do um, just because because we're both self-employed as well we've been lucky touch wood at the moment we haven't had a clash so oh it's coming I know you see that's (laughs) that's the thing but so at the moment like I know so come October he's away for a few weeks well no it's more than a few but anyway he'll be away so I'm kind of going that's okay. Don't be worrying too much. Don't push too much for anything because we don't want to have that headache because, you know, Chris's parents, they run a, they run a theatre group actually um, called Playbox. Uh, Are they close by? They're, they're close by, but they're completely, they're still working. They're, you know. They've got their own lives. They've got, got their, their own, own lives yeah. and their own things to be dealing with. And my parents are obviously still in Dublin. So it's, it, we're very much kind of winging it. Um, but yeah, it's it's it's. But how great that you're with a partner and raising children with somebody who understands the business yeah. and what you're going through. I mean, yeah. I think sometimes it's either a curse or a blessing. Yeah, or yeah, sometimes yeah, it's yeah, both. yeah, yeah, yeah. But they know yeah. that the mindset and they yeah. know they can empathise with yeah. what's going on with you during. Yeah. It the not so great times yeah exactly so it's great to have that support network yeah I think. no definitely definitely because I can't imagine because I know even I mean you'll know people who aren't actors friends or whatever you can't you, it's very hard to commit <laughs> uh, yeah oh thank you so much for that wedding invitation <laughs> if I'm not working I'll be there <laughs> oh second <laughs> cheers <fiddle. laughs> thanks a million that makes me feel great <laughs> 
Uh, I've I've got better at that. Actually, I've got better. At going, no, I'm just blocking that off and saying, look, I'm not available. And then, but again, I think I'm that is really healthy. It's, it, that comes under the the banner of saying no or, or yeah, saying yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I knew somebody not so long ago, and they hadn't had a holiday for fucking years That's because they were terrified that the job something. would come in. And it's like. You no, can't, no, 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 no. Can't, 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 can't. Y- yes, it's an unstructured career, but you've got into it, yeah. so you have to ride it. But don't let it ride you. No, no. Take a break. <laughs> I was talking to somebody yesterday, actually, on this podcast. He was a young actor, he was 25. I don't think I've met somebody more grounded. Wow, because he said, 25. Do you know, I know. Imagine what we were like at 25. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> That's that's another podcast. <laughs> um, and he was saying, we were talking about downtime and how it would affect anything to do with his mental health and things like that, mm. it, which comes under worry and yeah. you know, that snowball and all that. He says, you know what I do? He said, I just take, I remove myself from the city and I either go to the seaside or I go to the countryside, even if it's just for a couple of days and sometimes I'm with people, sometimes I'm not. And I've always got my music with me. And it's all about escapism. Oh, my God. And then he said, and I come back. And it doesn't matter. For all intents and purposes, it doesn't matter that I've got a job to come back to. It's that I'm recharged and refreshed. So, therefore, I'm in a slightly different mindset. Jesus, that's, he's got the self-care yeah. down. Smart, isn't it? That's unbelievable. Mm. 25. Mm. Holy mother of God. Is he lying about his age? No. Is he doing that actor thing? No. Shaved 10 years no. off? No. <laughs> <laughs> we trying to say, Sinead, if we don't do that. God, no. Sure, we're young. We wouldn't need to cry. <laughs> what are you talking about? Sinead, yes. um, I'm really, really pleased that we finally got this together. Is it over? Well, it can I've be over. I've said nothing of interest. Are you joking? <laughs> are you joking? I have I don't know what I've said, Craig. I'm oh, shiting on for God knows how long. <laughs> um, did you enjoy it? I did. Did you? I was very nervous. Why? Because it's a few shot pockets. Did I make you feel nervous? <laughs> yeah, Craig, you want to sort that shit out. Oh, you nasty bitch. <laughs> Should I clean it? Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Another episode is done. And what a fantastic episode 99 that was. Sinead Keenan is a legend. I adore her. Um, she's so funny. We just pissed ourselves. Um, and she said to me afterwards, uh, I'm sure she won't mind me saying this, that she felt a bit nervous about doing it. And she said, you know, who's interested in what I've got to say? And I had to reassure her and not... Um, for her, I was being completely honest. I said, Sinead, do you know that nearly everybody who I approach, either before we record or post-recording, um, they say, well, who's interested? Oh, what have I got to say? And by the end of it, they've spoken for over an hour and told incredible stories. Um, so that's that. So she wasn't alone. She's not in the same boat. Uh, it's great. She's just brilliant. I can't. If she's listening, Sinead, I cannot thank you enough for coming on, and I can't thank you enough for downloading and subscribing this and supporting us. The messages, the tweets, the emails, the support we get day in day out. It means so much, and the fact that when we announced episode one hundred with Martin Comston next week on Monday, I mean, it really went off. Everybody's really looking forward to it, and you should be. Because I don't, let me think, has Martin been on a podcast before? I'm not sure he has. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a real special one. Now, while we're talking to podcasts, you know, ages ago, moons ago, I, uh, either myself or Griff would recommend a podcast. Now, you know, um, I love the Cinemile. Uh, which is a film podcast, which if, if you don't know, do subscribe. Kathy and Dave, 
They're a married couple and they go to the cinema and then they walk back and they talk about it. It's a brilliant concept and it's a brilliant podcast and they're fantastic. Do that. And I love film podcasts and I don't know why this has um, passed me by because it's been going for bloody ages. Skip to the end. So Skip to the End is an amazing podcast. There are three hosts. They're all mates. It's Ben, it's Gemma and Mark. And they talk about a certain film. They have quizzes. They do giveaways. It's just, it's like you're, you know, sometimes people say about our podcast, it's a bit like you're in a pub, you're earwigging on a conversation. Well, this is like you're in a pub and there's three mates discussing a film and there's no old bar. Uh, no, what's, what's the phrase? No holds barred. Is that, that, that's it, isn't it? Yeah. They don't pull any punches at all. If they don't like something, they're going to say it's a right load of shit. Um, they're not sponsored by anybody. They don't need to do this. They just do it out of their love for film. And it's very funny. It's very entertaining. So do go and listen to Skip to the End if you're not already a subscriber. Um, I'm a huge fan. It's great. Now, um, I've been waffling enough. And I better get back to doing some work. So, until next week. <laughs> I'm just laughing. I'm tired. Until next week. Thank you so much for joining us. I've been Craig Parkinson. He's been producer Griff. And this has been the Two Shot Podcast. We will see you next week. The Two Shot Podcast is presented by me, Craig Parkinson, recorded and produced by Thomas Griffin for Splicing Block. Our music, our brilliant music, is courtesy of Then Thickens.